I actually had a horrible relationship with my older sister. Uh, we were always fighting, and I could always make her laugh. So, uh, somewhere along the line, it became important to me to make people laugh, and it's her fault. Uh, she was actually at the show. So the first time I performed stand-up, I uh, performed in my hometown, Syracuse. And the first time you perform comedy, you either know, you know whether it's right for you or whether it's wrong for you. And it's 12 years later, so that'll tell you what happened. So it's a tough time to tell people this, but Bill Cosby himself, 1978 with the Changing Backgrounds, was one of the first comedy albums uh, that I that I ever watched. I watched with my father. We loved it. Um, you know, set all the other stuff aside. Tim Allen was a guy who, on his come up with stuff I used to watch. I used to be captivated by Gallagher. Um, when you're a kid, you don't know what's good and what's bad. And so now it's it's CK, it's Burr, it's uh, um, Nate Bargatze, it's um, Drew Michael. It's all these guys that are doing incredible stuff. Probably the reason I do comedy though is a comedian by the name of Wendy Liebman, who's uh, re-initiated her career and, and she's fantastic. She's, she's one of my favorites. Wendy Liebman, look her up. I loved Home Improvement. And, I, and here's what it was. I think it was more I was a child, and it was and it was something that I was doing with my family. And and what comedy does is it touches on taboos, and it take and it takes your line, and, and it pushes you a little bit past it. And so, as a family, being able to watch those things and relate to each other as a family, that was important. So, home approval was huge for us. I really, I think we watched, I think we watched the Roseanne show too. But I was like way young when that came out. For me, sketch show, bar none, Human Giant. Um, what's his name? Um, well, it's Aziz Ansari, and is it Paul Paul Shear and Rob Hubel? Sorry, I couldn't think of the names. Rob Hubel, Paul Shear, and, and Aziz Ansari. Some of the best guests I've seen in my entire life. Human Giant. It was like a two-run season on MTV. Very, very fun show. Man, I loved all the Harold Ramis stuff. I loved, What I loved about those things was, was his ability to put comedy into basically reality. Now we've taken comedy, and, we've, and we've, we, the comedy is that we've removed reality so far. Everything will Ferrell. We've removed the, the commonplaceness of, of any of it. Steve Carell, all those kinds of comedies come from this sort of like foreign place where everything's so awkward. But Harold Ramis, Groundhog Day, and Ghostbusters, he was able to figure out how to put comedy into normal people, normal lives, normal, normal characters. And there's just something great about that. There's something I miss about a comedy that's based in actual reality. You learn, you learn so much from everybody that you work with. Um, comedians have, have a bad habit of not watching other comedians. Um, but when you're on tour, you really do, you, you get to watch and you get to see what people do. And you're, you're, you know, you're forced a little bit more to, to stay in that room and do that one show and focus on that one show and see how other people do what they do. Um, man, I don't know. I, f I mean, here, hey, let's put it this way. There's no one that I would say no to. Like, let's, uh, let, you know, let's. If I'm, if I'm the opener and they're, and they're doing something with their career that I don't know about and they're being successful and they're doing the thing, uh, there is something I can learn from that person. So anybody out there, I mean, down, down to you know the, the blue collar comedy tour guys, all the way to the Bill Burr or so, you know somebody on that on that sort of prolific level. There's always something that I don't, that I, some information that I don't have that I'd like to see how the people respond. To that. Kevin Hart, he's just a fun dude to be around. I think he's a, he's a, he's a real fun roaster. Andrew Schultz, who's a friend of mine. Um, who goes in hard because he knows I can take it and, and uh, uh, I really like being roasted. It's one of my favorite things. So let's go Kevin Hart, Andrew Schultz. Um, I don't know Big J is, uh, personally as much. We, we know each other, but I don't know. I think Big J Okerson would be a fantastic dude to get roasted by. Um, 
I think uh, old school like Dice Clay would be fun. Um, and then still probably the best to ever do it uh, would be Eddie Murphy. I think Eddie Murphy's still a, an incredible wrestler. I would say Chappelle, but I, I, it's not. That's I'd rather I'd rather just talk about horrible and depressing things with Chappelle and, and get his take on him. And Eddie Murphy, I think, would be a fun guy to just snap on. I want to do all of them. I just keep getting eaten by every bug in Florida. I want to do all of them. Uh, me and Andrew Schultz did a really fun sketch show a couple years ago for this uh, real estate company. Uh, I reinitiated that project with a guy named James Manzello, who's hilarious. I got to put a lot of my guys into that show. I'd love to write. I'd love to. Uh, <laughs> I'd love to write. I'd love to. I'd love to do all this stuff, man. You know, I, I'm ha I would happy. I'd be happy to be in front of the, the camera, behind the scenes, all of the things, writing acting, directing, all of that stuff, as long as, as long as there's a comedy aspect to it, um, I can't get enough. God, I hope it still exists, um, you know, hopefully they'll give me two nights at the Jackie Knight Comedy Club and not just one. Uh, I mean, you just gotta grow every year, you know what I mean? It's like, the, the, only, the only thing you have in comedy is this, is this short little resume, uh, and what happens is people want to put you on stuff, and you just gotta get all, you gotta try to get all the stuff. And the best thing that a, that a comedian can get is for someone that had you on a show to ask you back. That's all you want. At the end of the show, they want to see you again. And that's, so that's what I try to do every night, is give a good enough show that the venue, the crowd, they want you back. So hopefully playing all the same rooms you saw me at tonight and then some more in five years. Dan Frigolette, if you can spell it, you got it. Everything's Dan Frigolette, at Dan Frigolette, F-R-I-G-O-L-E-T-T-E. Uh, Frigolette, like Gillette. Easy to find once you start putting stuff in. I have an obscene amount of Facebook pages because there's a limit of how many friends you can have. So I have three Facebook pages. I apologize. Add me on Dan Frigolette, page three. Um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I'm not particularly good at any of the social medias, but I'm present on all of them. Uh, Differently.com. I just put out an album. It's called um, Naked and Amused Comedy in a Nudist Comedy. And it's on Amazon. It's on uh, Google Play. All of the things. Uh, Apple Music, iTunes, Pandora, uh, Spotify. Check me out there. So I got a podcast called uh, Comedy's Best Kept Secret Tour. I interview comedians. A lot of times we'll be in the car doing it. We just did a really fun episode of me and Ben Kronberg when we were driving to Memphis. Um, and then I have a podcast that just started called Porn Stars Are People, where I interview porn stars and we don't talk about porn. That's the whole goal, is to not talk about porn. Just talk about anything but porn. Porn Stars Are People. So that's a fun one. Check that one out. Um, yeah, and then I, you know, every once in a while somebody thinks I can act. And then I try, and they and they and they get proven that I can't. <laughs> like like right now, I'm looking in the camera. You're not supposed to look in the camera ever, and that's all I'm doing is looking in the camera. So I've been so I've been signing these little sheets. So I try to let everybody leave with one of these after the show. So that's me. Uh, when I was a little fatter, I was a fat Aladdin. And then this is, uh, these are a bunch of the nudists that I performed for in St. Louis when I, when I did my album. And then, people aren't going to know what these are, but these are, these are, uh, these are genitals, but they're, they're the rabbit and the fleshlight. So that's, that's something to look forward to. You'll, you'll have to listen to my set to understand what that means. So, uh, you know, for, dude, comedy is such a, uh, um, what's the word I want? It's a, it's a rejuvenating experience to laugh. Uh, and... and you know, every live performance, every comedian tries as hard as they can to get the people in that room to enjoy the experience that they're having. At all costs. That's the, that's the job. That's the resume. They say, you're a comedian? Okay, cool. Can you make the people laugh? And that's it. So every show, every comedian wants to make every person laugh. We, we hone in on the one guy who's not. We try to figure out what joke he wants to hear. And I try to do that every night. Sometimes you fail. Sometimes you're successful. 
but I'm, I, I feel pretty good. I feel like I'm doing all right right now, and I'm getting most of the people. So uh, that's that's what I want the takeaway to be. They have fun. Come talk to me. I'll sign your fucking your, your, your coloring book. My name is Dan Frigolette. Check out my interview on acutiepie.com with Sarath. Incredible dude. Incredible content. I appreciate him having me on.